Carl Forster, that great German nurseryman and gardener, once said that grass is the hair of the earth. It was the German gardeners that led the Renaissance in using grasses in the amenity landscape. Australians have been less keen to use them in their gardens, and I think it may be to something to do with when they were young, when they were children. Australian, all Australians were told not to go in the long grass because of the snakes. Now, nobody told their children not to go in the dahlias because of the snakes, but snakes are just as likely to enjoy the company of dahlias as they are grasses. Late summer and early autumn wouldn't be the same in our garden without these beautiful grasses. They're especially wonderful when you see the sun, the morning sun or the evening sun picking up these feathers which move with the faintest, faintest breath of air. This one is called Miscanthus. Comes from China and also Japan. Now, around Japan and the villages of Japan, they used to thatch the houses there. And outside of every village on the hillsides, you would see a few acres of Miscanthus growing. And every year, this would be harvested and dried and the whole village would get out and thatch one or two roofs, rather like the Amish do in America. They'd all The whole community would go out and thatch it. So over a period of 20, 25 years, all the houses would be thatched. Of course, now they don't use thatching anymore. But nevertheless, if you go there in the summer and you see these flowering on the hillsides behind the villages, it looks extraordinary. This cancer's sinensis comes from Japan and China, as I've just said. This species is Miscanthus transmorosinensis, and it comes from the hills of Taiwan, quite high up, maybe six, seven thousand feet, two thousand meters. And the difference between this and sinensis is this is an evergreen plant. And so in a way, it's more useful in Australia than the Miscanthus sinensis. No more beautiful when it's in flower, but it flowers a lot longer and it flowers from, really flowers from midsummer right through into the winter. And then the seed heads are very good into the winter. But even though it's evergreen, you've still got to cut it back. We still cut it back very hard about July, early August, because it gets rid of all that sort of brown, chaffy sort of grass, that the old blades that have sort of died off, and it makes room for the new ones to come. The plant stays really tidy. These are a whole range of seedlings of Transmorosinensis. Each is as beautiful as the next. Miscanthus nepalensis, as the name implies, comes from Nepal. And if you're looking at a botanical name, anything with ensis on the end means comes from. So nepalensis comes from Nepal. This is a new one for me. I've only had it for about 18 months or so. It has this wonderful hanging heads of golden feathers. They're beautiful. And I suspect this probably comes from the drier parts of Nepal because we've only watered it six times in the last 12 months and it stood up to the weather pretty well. Although having said that, we've had a fairly mild summer. So, With propagating Miscanthus, the name varieties have to be grown from division. Now, we find it best to divide them up when they're starting into new growth in the spring. If you do it in winter and there's no new growth coming, they can often rot off and nothing happens. So leave it till spring or you know, mid-August through to mid-September is a very good way to increase these plants. They are much better planted in drifts, although giving enough space for each plant to show its individuality. So you just don't, you don't want like a, a mass intertwined, but you want a drift of plants which have got good spacing, and then you get this wonderful effect 